Happy Halloween, everybody. Let's get started for the week beginning October 29th, 2018. I am all decked out in my Halloween stuff. You can't really see my sweatshirt, but I'll insert some B-roll of what it says. <laughs> this was a gift from my sister and I just think it is so adorable. Of course, I've got all my Halloween jewelry on. It's all, we're ready to go. All right, before we get started here, if you'd like to get a personal reading with me, just go to my website at angelsouls444.com. The services tab, the services tab is there, okay? People keep saying that they can't find it. It's it's right on the website, okay? Uh, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I leave all that information down below. And I do want to let you guys know that I will be filming, um, well, I've already filmed December readings for Gumroad. I got to get those edited and loaded. And then I'm going to be filming January and the year overview. Of course, I have all kinds of other courses over at Gumroad. So get on over there and check it out. All right, so let's just get right on to the auto right here. They begin by saying, caution with your interactions and bring peace unto you. For when you focus on peace, you will feel the truth of your soul level existence. So they're talking about, you always have a place that you can come back into. So as we go through life, we do tend to focus on negative things because, you know, that's the thing that's out of order, <laughs> all right? So if something's working smoothly, you don't really go and try to, you know, you don't put a whole lot of attention to that. You try to work on the things that you feel are uh, kind of falling down in life, right? So they're saying, but remember, when you need a moment to sort of recharge your batteries, you always have your soul and you can always come back to that point, okay? To the point of peace. Um, let's see here, the arguing, the fighting. You choose this, then ask why. <laughs> so we kind of do that by design, but there might be some real conflict coming out. Of course, maybe it'll be in politics. Maybe it'll just be out in the world. Maybe there will be some you know, controversial kinds of topics coming out and people are gonna start talking about them. But they have something interesting to say about this. They say, because it is where you are at at this time. So when we start fighting with each other and we ask, why is it like this? It's because this is where we are, okay? Think, think how you are changed after each disagreement, how your perception shifts when you are challenged, right? So, and they keep going on. For if you did not collide, how would you ever know what else there is to consider? All right, so we are learning from each other, even when we feel like we're at odds one, with one another, or you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know, like, I've had some disagreements with people in this past week, and as unpleasant as it was, I knew enough, like, okay, <laughs> here's the lesson I'm supposed to be learning from this, and I would have never seen it from that person's perspective if we didn't, as they say here, if we hadn't collided. Do you know what I'm saying? And now I'm like, okay, for the future, I know to take this approach, this approach, this approach, what have you, right? Okay, when you are at peace with this knowledge, you may return more swiftly to peace and all moves forward. Work through understanding in the coming days and dwell not in conflict, but become steady and, but become steady and recovering from mishaps and mis misunderstandings. Um, for it is common and you can, underline, work easily through it. With all love, angels and guardians of peace. So I think there's this message here of, 
yeah, we're going to naturally focus on what's wrong, as we said before, because that's the thing that needs to sort of be solved. So we might find ourselves gravitating towards focusing on, as we say, the negative. However, they're saying you can bounce back from this. It's, it is a, there's a valuable lesson in having conflict with people. There might be a valuable lesson in discovering there was a misunderstanding, but try to recover. So there, there's this whole thing of, okay, that doesn't bother me as much as it used to. I'm back, <laughs> all right? And we're, we're coming to a place of peace. So I hope that makes sense. Of course, we're gonna pull some cards as well to get more of a message. All right, so here we go. Take a good look at these nails because I'm going to be filming. They're on here for the long haul, I think. I did them for Halloween, but um, I'm going to have to record the January videos as well as the year overview with these nails. So don't, oh, did you see that? <laughs> All right, so this card flopped right out of the deck. It's Agate, Healthy Body. We will get to it here. Ugh. There's another card popping right out. Wow. Rose Quartz, Inner Child. Again, I'll hold all these up. Okay. <laughs> They're saying to pause right now and to give a little shout out about being careful this time of year with the spirit world. Okay. Because people, because we, you know, here in the United States, we celebrate Halloween and the veil is very, very thin and people tend to mess with the spirits on the other side. You don't want to invite in darkness. Don't do that, okay? Even if you think it's cool, even if you think, oh, it's fun, it's not fun. How would you like it if somebody came up and poked you in the face over and over and over again? You would not enjoy that, all right? So, and it's for your safety as well. So be careful, be respectful. Don't get out that thing that everybody likes to get out this time of year. I'm not even gonna say it, but don't get it out, okay? Don't mess with it. And I don't care if anybody tells you, oh, there's a safe way to work with it. Don't listen to those people. I remember there was a, an angel book, a supposed angel book that I saw and they had one of those, most of you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they had one of those in there and said that you could communicate with angels through that. Absolutely not. And by the way, angels don't come through a seance either. Try me on it. Argue with me. <laughs> I have courage. <laughs> See, so this is the next card that's popping out again. We'll give the whole story here. And then we, wow, Petrified Wood Ancestors. Again, kind of a message of be careful of, you know, the spirits that you're calling in. They might be ancestral spirits and maybe you're trying to get a hold of grandma or something like that, but other spirits can come on through. We're already in a time in our existence where the third and fourth dimensions are very, very close to one another. They're sort of overlapping, they sort of collapse into one another. And so you might have, especially since 2012, you might have seen some activity going on or you might suddenly feel like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> it feels like I'm never alone. It feels like, well, you do have your spiritual team, of course, but it's because of these crossing dimensions that you're starting to pick up more and more on um, spirits on the other side, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that they're bad. I, I'm talking like when people do the whole... Halloween concentrated mess with the spirits thing, then you're attracting the kind of spirits that don't mind a good game. And I, I just, again, caution is warranted. So be careful about what you're doing <laughs> in this coming week. Now, what's interesting here is we have this color scheme going on. Can you see that? There's one pink card, but the other ones are kind of brown or gold colored. So let me get the whole story here. All right, so, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry as I'm looking down. I know I break all the YouTube rules by looking down. It's just how I read. I'd rather get the message for you than follow all the silly YouTube rules that you're not allowed to look down or you're not supposed to. <laughs> I'm always checking my monitor too over here, make sure we're still recording, make sure nothing has gone awry. Why is that? Well, especially if you do this kind of work, the energies can start getting kind of weird and electrical equipment can fail. So <laughs> you're going to see me looking over here to make sure we're still gone. Anyway, let's get into it here. So we have agate, healthy body. And I really feel like this is a time to give to yourself. And when we talk about striving for peace and we want that inner peace, remember you have to have some bit of self-care on every single level. So this might be you're working through some arguments this week, some disagreements and you're finding resolution for most of you, unless you are just somebody who's in a very, very pained place and you just can't let go. 
yet, that's okay, you know? But remember, let's take our health seriously. <sighs> yeah, they're saying that people who, um, who, who, I, I have like these claws. <laughs> these hurt, by the way. <laughs> not going to lie to you. Anyway, they're saying that people who get into their spiritual practices, they often will neglect their physical body and remember, or try to deny being human. That drives me nuts just as a human, if I'm honest, you know, I mean, I'm like, you're, you're here to be on human mission. If you want to see it that way. And you're trying to say, Oh, I'm not a third dimensional being. I'm a fifth dimensional being. That's a lie. Okay. There's a part of you that's a fifth dimensional being, but as long as you are in a density body and you're not floating across the floor, you're still in 3D. Okay. <laughs> well, I choose to live a 5D existence. Why? Ooh, she said, what now? Why? Why do you need to be in 5D right now? Oh, because that's what we're ascending to. You're here to be human. Okay. You're here to feel the range of emotions. Now, is it important that you remember your fifth dimensional self? Absolutely. That's your higher self. But these people who want to kid themselves. I said it. That's a little harsh. Maybe don't, don't come for me. Don't hate on me. <laughs> but you know, these people who want to pretend that, oh, I'm living my 5d existence. You're not okay. You're still in a human body, uh, a human body. Don't forget about your human body. And I think that's what this is really getting at. Okay. Okay. I feel like I just got really controversial, but whatever. Okay. We'll just keep going. Anyway, Rose Quartz is the next card and it's inner child. So we're going to find that, ooh, they just said escapism. That's a lot of what people are doing with trying to clamor towards 5D sort of prematurely, right? We're supposed to have an awareness of it. We're supposed to be integrating some of those aspects into our world, but you're still going to have rent to pay. You're still going to have to contend with other humans, right? And, and that's, we don't want to be in denial, okay? We want to be careful with that. And they are talking about escapism. Now, your inner child, of course, we could say, you know, work with the inner child this week, but that rose quartz along with the healthy body, you have to love yourself. And a lot of really, you know, ask yourself this week, you know, how much of how I live my life and how I sort of conduct my life, how much of that has to do with what I was taught as a child? What are those patterns? What is it that I need to be aware of right now? Okay. But approaching it with love, because that's, that's rose quartz. <laughs> All right. So then we have tiger's eye courage. As I am recording this, there are things flying out of my mouth and I'm like, where the heck did I get that from? But here we go. The very same thing might be happening for you in this coming week where you find that you're standing up for yourself and a lot of you are going to be discovering some of those patterns, okay? If you feel guilty because you couldn't provide something to, for someone that really they should be providing for themselves or if you, you know, let's say you put your foot down because someone is starting to take advantage or you're starting to like, you got to set a boundary, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be, have courage to do so and try not to feel guilty about it. But if you do, pay attention to when that guilt comes up and then ask yourself, is that something that I learned from childhood? That if I stand up for myself, I'm to be punished? Okay. Yeah. Self-awareness, self-care. That's, that's the theme along with that whole piece and finding that inner peace, right? And you can, you can access that while you're in a human body. I, I really feel like they're going, okay, it's all good to be spiritual, but you got, you got to be really, really grounded. You know, one of the videos that I, I really want to do is parallel science with spirituality, right? Because there are so many areas where they cross over. They're just called different things, but we have the scientific explanation for it. And then we have people in their belief systems. Don't forget science is mostly theory. All right. <laughs> Just like belief systems, science is mostly theory. I would love to do that because I'm a bit of a science geek myself, but uh, there's just been too many parallels. And again, that kind of comes back to this message of uh, don't run away with something that you're fabricating in your head. And I, and I think that goes deep because I think people get this whole conception of God. They get this whole conception of what the other side is like, what heaven is like, if you believe in heaven or what your version of heaven would be. And we're just not leaving room for the universe to reveal itself because we're, we're too busy playing house, <laughs> so to speak, you know, with our own contrived perceptions of what that is. Does that make sense? So I think in this week, it's like, okay, kind of let all that go. Let all the pressure go to be something that you're not. Come into that inner peace. If you have conflict, know that you're learning from it 
And this, in a weird way, is sort of how we help each other out as humans, okay? So then we have Petrified Wood Ancestors. When this card comes up, yes, it can be ancestral karma. Again, patterns being passed down from one generation to the next. I do feel, though, that this is like learning from your ancestors. We are not our ancestors. That's what they're saying right now. We are not, you are not your ancestors. So I'm, I'm interpreting that. <laughs> we are not our ancestors. We are not in the same time that they were in. How often do you see people going, oh, we need to get back to how our ancestors used to live. Why? Oh, because it was more basic. It was closer to the earth. It was this, it was that. They lived that way because they had to. Okay. Now, if you go back in time, let's say you're a time traveler and you hand an iPhone to one of your ancestors, you think they're going to still be out there plowing that field? They're going to be like, oh no, I got this new tool. I'm going to figure out how to hire somebody to do this for me <laughs> or whatever. You know, if they had the tools that we have access to now, they would have been the same way. All right. So we got to, we got to shake out of that a little bit. Like, oh, the way the ancestors did it was the right way. They were closer to God. They were closer to whatever, uh, Lemuria. Atlantis, they had true wisdom. They had, really, did they? Where are they? Welcome to being human. All right. So let's not over glorify our ancestors. Yes, I know I have some ancestors in my <laughs> lineage that have some wild stories. And yeah, okay, fine. We can honor where we've come from. But this is more about if you're going to compare at all, Look at how far we've come. Look at how we have developed as a, as a human species, okay? Uh, look at what we've learned. Look at how we do things differently now, all right? Not that it's better or worse, but let's not over-romanticize the past. Careful with that. All right, wrong deck. We want this one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do you guys like my little, can you see this little guy back here? These little, well, these little pumpkins back here. I actually bought this plate. It's like a metal plate. I bought it in Salem and shipped it all the way back, put it in my little bag, brought it all the way to New York, got it across the country with me. You know, on the back, it says it's made in Ohio. I'm from Ohio. I could have just gone to wherever those are made <laughs> and saved myself the hassle of going all the way to the coast. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. All right. So let's get the color card for this week. If it's orange or black, that would be really funny, right? For Halloween. <laughs> All right. All right. That seems about it right there. What do we have? We have gold. Okay. It's autumn. It's a great card. It is attract abundance. The number is 21. And... I mean, there you go. Your key to abundance is understanding what's real and what's not real, <laughs> okay? So watch in your life where you're contriving things. If you want real abundance to come in, start looking at how all the different forms that abundance expresses as. Okay, I totally didn't say that right. There are a lot of different forms that abundance can take, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so start appreciating what's already there because they're saying that the abundance is already all the way around you every which way and a lot of people just ignore it because it doesn't look the way they think it should all right and this is also reminding you that you have the power to bring abundance into your existence just by relaxing and being in a state of peace okay what you need and want not even need what you want will come to you as long as it's good for you if you're one of those people who's sitting there going i want my ex-boyfriend back why why? You broke up for a reason. Okay. Let that go. Ugh. Let some real love come in. Make room. Make room. Okay. <laughs> I feel so feisty today. Maybe it's the nails. <laughs> like I feel like a wizard. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to end it there. I love you guys so much and take care.